Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the regular City Commission meeting of July 10th, 2018. We will begin the meeting with an invocation by Rabbi Decker of Slot North Broward. Almighty God, we stand before you in prayer. Look favorably on the mayor and the honorable members of the City Council of our great city of Lighthouse Point. We beseech you, Almighty and merciful God, to extend your grace to each and every, me each and every member of this august body and bestow upon them the joy of life, good health, and prosperity. Bless these distinguished individuals who have been chosen to make laws and decisions for the citizens of our city. Grant these public servants wisdom and understanding in the noble pursuit of justice and equality. Give them guidance so that they will always be conscious of your presence and will strive to enact laws with honesty and integrity in accordance with your will. May they have the wisdom to turn adversity into opportunity and to transform the hard challenges that we face today into the seeds from which we'll, we'll sprout forth the growth of tomorrow. May our city continue to serve as a beacon of life for all people. Amen. Amen. Call the meeting to order and we'll do the pledge of the flag. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Madam Clerk, roll call. Mayor Crows, <laughs> is home. Mayor. Oh, hey, ma hey, Mayor. Okay. Commission President Joffe? Here. Commission President Walker? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Here. Commissioner Long? Here. Commissioner Van Buster? Here. City Attorney Cirillo? Here. City Administrator Levinsky? Here. Finance Director McCollum? Here. Fire Chief Gil Martin? Here. Library Director Sheen? Police Chief Lakata? Here. Recreation Director? Here. Great. Um, commissioners, there are two sets of minutes for approval. Um, I assume you've all had an uh, opportunity to review them both. Any corrections, comments, observations? No, but I'll move to uh, accept the budget workshop meeting and the regular meeting of June 26, 2018. Second. Presented. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. <coughs> you do you do them both? Yes. Yeah. Treasurer's report, finance director to follow up. Good evening. Good evening. General fund has two million fourteen thousand eight hundred and seventy one dollars and eighty three cents. Cleanup deposits thirty four thousand four hundred dollars and no cents. Garbage and trash fund one million two hundred nine thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars and sixteen cents. Special Purpose Funds, $2,876,448.70. Stormwater Utility Fund, $341,868.33. Debt Service Fund, $211,636.20. Contingency, $5,483,748.00. General Fund Encumbrances, $186,810.66. Total All Funds, $12,359,482.88. Questions for our esteemed finance director. I do have one question. I think more toward John. I know oh, Chuck's not here. Uh, I saw that there was a repair for the fleet generator for eleven thousand dollars. Was it like major overhaul? Was it normal maintenance or <coughs> no, uh, Commissioner? No, it's a major overhaul. It's the generator's broken, and and, and it, what it includes is also rebuilding of the generator, but also renting a generator too for the period of time it's out. So we're in hurricane season. We don't want the generator to be out, so we have a rental out there. Oh, okay. That's perfect. I mean, I'm glad at least we're prepared for it, but I was just wondering to make sure it was see what was going on with that. And a cool question. I still see the dredging services. Any updates on that? Um, I thought they were not starting soon. I thought we... That was that uh, August. The, the, the last update I got from uh, yeah. Health Works Director was when you had when you had it the last meeting. So okay. he's on vacation this week. Okay. And uh, we'll get an update from him uh, next week. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Nope. nope. Thank you. Thanks. Now comes the time of our meeting where uh, the public can come up and provide comments and requests regarding agenda items. Um, there are agendas at the back of the room. We are here to discuss a specific item. It's on our agenda. There is an opportunity at the end of the meeting for anything, but if you'd like to discuss something on the agenda, come on forward. Everett Marshall, 2821 Northeast 44th Street. I see we have on the agenda, and I was I apologize for not being able to print out the agreement between the police and the fire that you're going to... City and the fire. City and the fire. Right. Okay. 
Um, and the police is on there too, I believe. It is. Okay. Anyway, uh, where was the uh, pension situation resolved? Satisfactory to everybody, or is that still floating out there? I mean, I didn't see the agreement, so I don't know what's the in the fire department. The fire department, and I guess the city administrator can correct us. We're going to talk about this, but the fire department has approved the proposal that they put forth by the city. That's correct. The fire department ratified the contract, and it's on the agenda tonight for the commission to approve it. Is the police department? <clears throat> the police department uh, did not ratify the agreement. They voted. They voted against it. Okay. It's the same. So we offer the same uh, pension terms to, to both uh, labor unions. Yes. But the police didn't. Nope, that's correct. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Anybody else to address any items on our agenda this evening? Seeing none, hearing none, we'll close the comment regarding agenda items, reports from city administration. City Administrator Levitsky has a report for us. Uh, Mr. President, Commissioners, I got two reports. One is that uh, we received a, uh, a submittal from the Yacht Club today. So uh, it's, it's for a land use plan amendment uh, to change its name to the land use map. And you know, from right now the Yacht Club is uh, commercial recreation, all B2A, and you want a residential component. So they submitted that. Um, they also submitted a site plan along with it. So if you hear anything in the city about whether they've submitted, we just want to let you know that. It finally happened? It finally happened. <laughs> so we'll go through the process. And what are the next steps, time-wise? Well, the next step is uh, the city attorney and the city planner and I are going to get together. We got together today at 11.30. We're going to get together again uh, this week, and we're going to come up with a timeline and how we want to process this. It's, it's a complicated uh, issue. Uh, are they going to, are they going to, are they planning on it to be one project or two separate projects? So we, we have to uh, talk between us and get our position straight now that we have something we can review the with exactly what they wanted. This is the first opportunity that we can actually review what, I mean, what's really been submitted. Before it was just concepts and conversations, but we really have something to look at. Mr. Walker, you had No, I was, that was the question I was going to ask is what are the next steps? So. And I would, I would just add thinking ahead ahead, depending on the timeline the city comes up with. Um, this would obviously go before planning and zoning. Um, and, and I don't know if this is customary or even appropriate is this something, given the magnitude of it, that the city commission could have a workshop with the planning and zoning board to talk about? Just so it's not. Uh, I, and I would literally. I, 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 I look at that. Yeah, okay. I, mean, I, I think I think if it, you know, already have an important project like that, you know, getting the, the, the feedback from folks is something that would be useful, um, and the community input would be useful um, in the process. Uh, we can certainly ask the applicant if they're willing to. Um, have prior to any formal consideration of their applicant of their application um, attend a workshop or a you know, we could we could notice it as such with you all with planning and zoning board members of the public and basically have them go through their application and hear some feedback. I think that if it's appropriate again when you are going to have to approve, approve as a commission you're going to have to approve the land use. Right, and you're going to have to approve the reason. But my my point yeah my my point is my point is and again. I think there's a couple commissioners up here that would address like the process and bureaucracy. If, if, if the commission is going to have comments and input and have the ultimate decision making, if it's appropriate, I I, I don't see anything inappropriate with it. Uh, we would have to, we would, we could you know, I think you're yeah, and they're willing to do it. Yeah, maybe they're not. I I don't know. Yeah, I mean, as like I said, the first the first step through the process is the land use amendment, that ultimately comes to you all. Right. Okay. Um, the next step is the rezone. That ultimately comes to you all. Um, the site plan and, if necessary, a conditional use, the P and Z has final unless someone appeals it, and then it ultimately comes to you. So you all have the ability to be the final decision maker on the project. So. It might not, that actually might not be a bad idea if the applicant is willing to engage in a community forum to hear from you all, hear from planning and planning board members, and hear from the public on a project like this, and maybe take that back and see how they, how that works with their plan. Yeah, I just try to minimize the B word bureaucracy in this process. You won't be able to minimize it here. 
there's the statutory requirements. Oh, I understand. You know, there's public hearing requirements. There's standards. Um, there's unless you know, if they if, if, if you can go on those four steps that I just outlined, you could do it all together as one um, package kind of thing. Okay. You know, some things are governed by state law. Some things are governed by our code. Mr. Okay, I'm probably the biggest critic on bureaucracy, but I think this is a situation that really requires it. This is a big deal. It's going to impact a lot of people for a long time. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of public interest in it. Anything we can do to make it the process more transparent, I think it's good for the city, <coughs> good for the residents, and good for the project. So I think a workshop is an excellent idea to give up, you know, folks an opportunity. if. The Yacht Club folks are willing to do it, which I would think they would be. They've been pretty transparent to date. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be an excellent idea, something we should consider. Okay. I definitely concur with that. I think the, uh, there's so many different steps here. This is one of the largest projects that the City of Lighthouse Point's had since it's really been developed, that uh, it will affect a lot of people, especially in that neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of what ifs that's been going around. There is uh, a lot of discussion. From the neighborhood of you know, how's this going to affect everything from water pressure to the sewers to everything else? And I think a, a a workshop will provide that opportunity with public comment. That planning and zoning has a better idea with the site plan presented. We'll have a little more information on land use now. After the land use amendment it goes to what planning council? Land use amendment has to go. Through the county has to approve it. Planning council is a fact. Okay. Okay. So it typically goes to the county commission from the fact that. Yes. I think. Okay. I think. Yeah. They need to. We were talking about that. Uh, with Michelle, which one's the chicken account. and which one's the egg when it comes to the comp plan amendments? Um, I think the, the county looks to us to do it, and but they have to amend the county plan too to be consistent. The application actually says amendment to both. Because I thought it had to go with us, then land, then planning council, then the county commission, and back to us. It could. It very well could. Michelle, when the planner was going to, one of the things we discussed today was mapping out that process and then understanding with the applicant what their thoughts were on the process. So your discussion this evening fits into that discussion, discussion that we want to have with them, which is understanding um, how we move this thing forward. Uh, you know, and you said. But it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Logistically yeah. and efficiently, but at the same time, ensure everything is done properly. We want to be as transparent as possible, and we want them to be as transparent as possible. So, let's lay it out there. Okay. okay. Well, we'll have conversations and we'll reach out and see what they're thinking of. Commissioner Johnson has it. Yeah, I agree with all you folks because I think right now there's so many rumors that have been floating for all this time. and. Uh, to give people a chance to actually come in and hear right, right from them, hear from us and everything, I think would be great. And it would, I think it would put out a lot of fires, maybe start a few extras too. But uh, I think that I think it'd be a really good idea. Good job, Jason. Good to talk. Um, anything else, Mr. Wilkinski? Um, not on that subject. I have another subject. I'm going to talk. Oh, about. are we done? Anything else on the alcohol? Okay. Uh, this is on waste management. Um, item item six on the agenda is either setting up preliminary rates for garbage and trash fund um, for the upcoming fiscal year. About uh, two hours ago, I got a call from waste management, Luigi Pace, the gentleman who was here at the last meeting. Um, and his proposal at first was, you know, they're going to increase the rates if we stayed with them to $14 a month. Um, our agreement with waste management still has two three-year renewal options. Uh, he called a couple hours ago and he said. Um, Waste management can uh, still wants an increase, but they would have an increase of seven dollars per month for the same level of service. Um, what what happened during at the last meeting? The commission said to go out to bid, so we prepared an RFP. We looked at some numbers on how much tonnage we developed, or you know we're, we're, we're uh, developing and, and we're disposing of, um, and we just looked at all our numbers, and it turns out that we've been shortchanging waste management on our payments since 1 October 2016 when we transferred from uh, um, direct billing to on the tax bill. So we've been collecting it from the residents, but we've been, we haven't paid waste management enough money, and right now we own some money. How much? Um, I think it's roughly $220,000. We have collected the money. We have collected the money. That's why our, our garbage and trash fund has been going up. 
because we haven't paid them. So that's one of the reasons why. So as soon as we discovered that, I'm glad I can't discuss issues related to it. <laughs> we, we called we called waste management and we let them know um, what we found. So and we asked waste management to recalculate the increase they're looking for, and they came back today with with seven dollars a month. So uh, at the uh, item six is, is setting the rates. You know, for the garbage and trash bin preliminary rates, and right now it's showing that the increase can, is, can go up as high as $14 a month. So I'm looking for direction tonight. The RFP is going out tomorrow. It's been written. It's going to be advertised tomorrow. Would the commission like to continue to go out for an RFP, or would you like to uh, bring the contract back August 28th before you move? Before you move, before you go forward, I want to give, since if you're going to have a discussion at this point, I want to give the commission president. An opportunity yeah, what, if you're going to discuss at this point to do with as, as you did the last year. I, I obviously, if we're going to get into procuring, you drive back Gallo. You're right. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it from here. <laughs> wow. Do you want to do that? I guess you can do it. Do you, want to, do you want to do that discussion now, or do you want to do it concurrent with um, item six, which is the amount that I think our finance director is going to ask you to set regardless? So we want to wait till I say let's do it now. I'm, I would say that we do it now because the discussion is. I was going to go to Commission President. I say do it. I say do it now. I say we discuss the actual pricing right now, and the whole what we set for the millage rate. We know that the ceiling is set at fourteen dollars. So to me, I would rather have a discussion right now since it's fresh in our minds, and because this is, I think it's super important to our residents, and it's currently affecting a lot of areas around us too. Michael. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to announce my voting. I'm going to announce. Yeah. I'm going to announce my voting conflict on this issue. I'm not going to engage in discussions. I'm also, in an abundance of caution, going to recuse myself from agenda item six, which is a discussion regarding the non adequate assessment, um, since it could dovetail and have a relationship to the procurement issue we're discussing. So I'm going to recuse myself for that. So you get to hold the gavel choice. Okay. So noted. Right. And for the record, I'm sorry. The rumor about to go through the 112 colloquy. <laughs> it's the, your your wife. Oh yes, my wife. Law firm. My wife is an attorney, as many people know, and she does uh, work for waste legal work for waste management. Okay. Can I go first? That's the president. <laughs> Michael, you have to <laughs> you hope the clock wasn't running. It's uh, now. Yeah, I, I, you know, and, and John just told me this a few minutes ago, and after I've worked with waste management a long time, and this is kind of the give and take that we've gone through over the years. Um, I would be happy with the $7 as long as everything stays the same the way it is. Um, I would try and keep the ceiling at $14 today because we can always lower it, but since this is a verbal offer of $7, I'd like it in writing, and I know that would happen, and I would pull the RFP. I will say that when we have looked into doing RFPs in the past, waste management would say we're not going to be the low ball, we're not going to play that game. Um, through other cities who've changed uh, waste service providers, they can be problematic, especially in a city like Lighthouse Point with our numerous number of canals that block streets, so it goes in 27th, then you get a crossover, you know, four blocks away to get to some different areas. Um, and the service they do provide is excellent. I think we all agreed on that. So um, kind of moving forward, I'd like to say we could save a lot of of big problems if we think that seven dollars is an appropriate amount of increase, and that we pull the RFP, uh, but keep the fourteen dollars um, as, as an increase. Right now, we can always reduce later. We know we can't go higher, so that would be my recommendation. Uh, the RFP we can still keep, and you know, if they send it out in a week, we do that. But let's see if we put something in writing. Sandy, you have a thought? Uh, well. I agree with Mike as far as waste management, I, as I believe the care for which wish for, and I know they give us such good service that I'd be willing to think that this amount of a raise would not be a deal breaker because I would hate to take a chance on another garbage company. I mean, going through the higher garbage companies in Florida Keys, I've, I've seen firsthand how really troublesome it can be, and I just appreciate waste management. and. You know, I think we talked about it last time. Even the people that work on the trucks are so nice and congenial and helpful and everything. So my thought would be to to go with them. And I'm not sure that I would think about doing an RFP if we're going to okay. agree with the seven dollars. 
I'm, I'm with uh, I'm online with pretty much everybody else up here. The fact that seven dollars is way more reasonable than fourteen dollars only turns out to be about a twenty percent increase. Um, we did have I just briefly asked uh, Mike Cirillo about the issue about where the price increases are. Uh, he was talking about it's a CPI for the what was the exact name, John? Yeah, what's the exact name? The CPI is the water, wastewater, and trash. Uh, uh, right. CPI. Correct. Which is fine for their regular increases, which actually he was mentioning it was a little bit higher than normal CPI. But one of the things I do want to make sure that we continually hold, or at least give administration the option, is like John was saying, it's only a verbal right now. And until it comes back and right in and shows the seven dollars, I want to make sure that since we don't meet for another month, that the administration has the power to go ahead and say, hey, listen, it came back and it was $7 and there were some things that were missing out of here and a day here or a day there. Whatever the terms don't come back exactly as a $7 increase per month, I would like to make sure the administration has the power to go ahead and issue the RFP uh, if the numbers do not come back in at $7 exactly. All right, and I'm in total agreement. Uh, this is, to me is a no-brainer. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. When you take a look at the social media and the stuff, the comments are ridiculous because people think we're in the same situation as Deerfield, Sunrise, Weston, and others. A lot of misinformation out there. If, but I think we all agree we, we need it in writing. And if they're willing to do that, then I would uh, remove the RFP and move forward with the contract as long as they're willing to provide that in writing, then I think we should move forward, and I think we're unanimous in our thinking on this. Earl, if I may get a word on this. Yeah, Mayor. I heard several, I heard several comments about $7. Um, any motion that's made, I, my request would be $7 or less. Uh, I'm not giving up on getting a lower number yet. All right, do we need a motion? Well, what I was going to suggest is because this is one of those that's related to a topic on the agenda but not quite on point, just make sure nobody from the public wants to speak on the discussion that you're having now. Um, and then if you want to give a motion, given I think it might be useful, remember at the last meeting you did it by consensus. But at this point, since we have something verbal, if you want to give a motion so the administration is clear, especially since we're not meeting again until August 28th, you know, we want to just make sure that we have some, um, we, we know what the commission wants us to do. All right, who would like to articulate a motion? I will. Yeah, just what, before you vote on a motion or take All right, so in case anybody wants. I'll open the uh, floor for public comment regarding waste management and the discussion that has taken place up to this point. If anybody would like to speak to the topic. Although it was already on the agenda, but it's been a little different. Uh, Everett Marshall, 2821 Northeast 44th Street. I would hope that possibly you get in the discussion with waste management about um, they could obviously lower their costs by getting less people on the back of their truck and having one armed bandit. The, the one armed bandit truck came today down 45th Street, picked up the recycles. It's, it's neat, it's clean. If you go into to Pompano or across uh, US 1, <clears throat> the trash cans are lined up, one trash can per house. A 60-gallon trash can is enough for any, any family in White House Point. It cleans up a lot of issues by having just that one trash can. If we're going to do it twice a week, there is, should not be no issue for anybody. You don't have a little bit of can here, a little bit of can there. And you went through a, a period where you had a, uh, a discussion and trash cans can't come out and have to be put away. If you only have one trash can and two recycle cans, there should never be, and, and the place will look neater, won't have much rat problem because you'll have cans that are closed. Uh, I just think maybe this waste manager might be open to helping that situation along. And obviously, like I say, it's going to cut their workman's comp down by a whole bunch not having people lift cans. So. All right, thank you, Everett. Anybody else would like to address the commission on this issue? Seeing none, hearing none, let's move on. Uh, if you want to articulate a motion, Michael? I think so. Okay. I would like to yeah. make a, I like, my motion would be to, uh, at this point in time, accept the, or have a, make a motion to take the $7 or less that currently waste management is offering increase per month However, not to constrain, if it does not come back in writing, that administration has the right to release the RFP. 
Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, Hold on a second. Uh, Mr. Marshall raised an interesting point about the one armed bandit. Uh, does that motion include considering the one armed bandit, or is that motion keeping the same level of service? I think we're talking about the same level of yes, service. Yes. We talked about that one armed bandit and the need for bigger cans, and we were concerned about that yes. last time. So it's That's fine. I just didn't hear Kyle's motion make that clear. I may, have over, I may have not heard it well because the phone is cutting out a little bit. Not a problem. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. 401 abstention. Is that correct? Correct, sir. Gavel to yours. Excellent job, Vice President Walker. Um, department reports back onto the agenda. Um, department reports. You know, they report from our recreation director, Ms. Lisa. At least that's what it says. <laughs> yes. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, last commission meeting, we had a dedication to John Shadell, and I wanted to tell you that just today it was installed over at Frank McDonough Park. Yeah. And there you see it is official John Fidel Field at Frank McDonough Park. And um, I did put it on the Lighthouse Point Recreation Facebook and there's a lot of comments and lovely, uh, you know, just people saying what a great job it was and well deserved. So the community's happy and I'm sure John's somewhere enjoying it as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank did John say anything about having his face painted in the field? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go to uh, no reports from the city attorney, no reports from standing committees. Our next planning and zoning meeting is September 4th. Code enforcement August 21st, community appearance July 19th, special magistrate July 13th, marine advisory August 2nd. There is no unfinished business. The first item of new business is acceptance of funds from the James C. Atchison Fund of the Community Foundation of Broward and to waive the bid process for the purchase of a striker stretcher power load system with the funds. Chief Bill Martin. And special guest, Ms. Morgan from the Community Foundation. And the House Point Resident. And the Late House Point Resident. I did not know. Okay. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. Uh, very pleased to bring an item to the agenda tonight as a gift from one of our residents that has helped fund many items in our fire department um, over the years. Mr. Atchison has once again graciously agreed to purchase through his foundation a striker stretcher power load system and the stretcher that accompanies. Uh, Mr. Atchison has agreed to fund two-thirds of the cost of the purchase and the installation of, of the system. Um, this was done with the support of the mayor, the, assistant, uh, the assistance of Commissioner Mocker, and Mr. Atchison's representative with the Broward Foundation, Justine Moore. Justine, has a few words to say. I'll just be brief. Uh, Jim just wanted me to say what a pleasure it is uh, to partner with the city once again. Uh, he's really appreciated Chief Bill Martin's uh, work on this, and he's very excited to bring this to the city residents. And he will be back in the fall and uh, hope to take a ride on the stretcher. But uh, on behalf of uh, this, myself being a resident, I'm very gracious and uh, grateful for Dr. Atchison and Chief Bill Martin for working on this together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. My pleasure. So our, our agenda item is for the acceptance of uh, funds from James T. Atchison, Fund of the Community Foundation of Broward, and waive the bid process to purchase a stretcher, uh, stretcher power load system with the funds. Um, City Ordinance 2017-0946 requires gift size at more than $20,000 to be accepted by the City of Michigan. Uh, Lighthouse Point resident um, Dr. James T. Atchison has offered his financial support to fund, <laughs> to fund the purchase of a state-of-the-art stretcher and patient loading system from Stryker Medical. The Stryker Stretcher Power Load System is a stretcher loading system used to load and unload patients <clears throat> to the back of, the, of our rescue vehicles. The Stryker Power Load System will lift the entire weight of the patient during loading and unloading, decreasing the possibility of back injuries to the firefighter paramedics. Um, the stretcher can, is rated for up to 700 pounds to lift in there. So we, have very, we do have bariatric patients that we do uh, have to transport and, and assist. Uh, these larger patients can cause uh, our stretcher to become unstable and endangering the patient and greatly increase the probability of, of back injuries to the firefighter and paramedics. 
the striker uh, stretcher power load system plus the insulation is the cost of $52,696.15. Um, Dr. Atchison has agreed to contribute two thirds of the total cost of this total cost and the city would be responsible for the remaining one third responsible for overseeing the purchase and installation of the equipment. Uh, the agenda item is going to require the following thing, except the financial gift in the amount of $35,130.77, approved the MO uh, Memorandum of Understanding with the Community Foundation of Broward, waived the bid process and, and approved the purchase of the Stryker Stretcher Power Load System from Stryker Medical and declared the old Stryker Stretcher a surplus for property. They have all the attachments in, uh, included to it. Uh, the breakdown of the financial impact would be Community Foundation of Broward, two-thirds would be $35,130.77. City's contribution at one-third would be $17,565.38, with the total project being at $52,696.50. Recommendation that the City Commission take the following actions by motion, accept the financial gift from James C. Atchison Fund in the amount of $35,130.77, approve the memorandum of understanding with the Community uh, Foundation of Broward, waive the bid process, and approve the purchase of the Stryker Stretcher Power Load System from Stryker Medical, declare the old Stretcher as surplus property to sell, trade, or auction, and authorize the proper city officials to execute the necessary documents. Thank you, Chief. The uh, request of the uh, Commission is for a motion, but any discussion in advance of that? Just, just one shot, a, a, a very big thank you to Jim and his generosity. It's almost every year he has come up with a gift of some sort or indicated his willingness to, to be a benefactor to this city, and it's enormously appreciated by all of us, his generosity through the years. So this is just another example of the kind of commitment that he has made to this city, and we want him to be a resident for a long, long time to come. I do as well. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner? Do you want to make motion? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll make the motion that, uh, unless there's further discussion, that we accept the funds from the James Atchison uh, Fund of the Community Foundation and waive the bid process to purchase striker stretcher power load system with the funds as detailed by the chief. There's a clear, there's a commitment. Yeah, go to the next page over. That's the way it's and uh, All right, so also to accept the gift, which I said, approve the memorandum of understanding with the foundation, waive the bid process, and approve the load system, declare the old stretcher surplus property of self trade, or auction, and authorize the appropriate city officials to execute the necessary documents. Second that motion. The motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, President. You. Before I sit down, one more thing I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Justine again. <laughs> uh, she put us in contact with the family of Bud Littlewich, who uh, Bud Littlewich was a resident of Lighthouse Point for 30 years before he passed away in 2012. His family was looking for an opportunity to give back to the city of Lighthouse Point and its residents. Justine was aware of some of the items that the fire department was looking to possibly purchase and was able to offer them some options. Uh, they decided on purchasing the Acubane 400, which is a, uh, which has the capability of visualizing veins <coughs> that enable the firefighter paramedics to locate and place IVs. It's very simple to use. The firefighter paramedic just points at the area of the skin and the Acubane 400 will display all the peripheral veins. <laughs> And uh, that will allow for successful, you know, a lot more successful IV starts. Uh, this technology saves precious time, wasted supplies, and most of all, additional discomfort for the patient. We are very thankful to the Bud Littlewich and his family for making this generous donation in the memory uh, to the residents of Lighthouse Point and to the Lighthouse Point Fire Department. So, and thank you, Jesse. Very generous check. Do we need to accept it? Do we need to vote? It's not over this one. Okay. Okay. It's not over this one. Okay. 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 Okay.
Misty, she's a good person. Good person to know. <laughs> Thank you. One talk. I'm holding up. Yeah, I'm a little I have a little throat thing going on here, a little under the weather, so I apologize. Um, so this uh, item is uh, <coughs> brought to you out of necessity. We have an expiring contract with our current auditors, Keith McCollin Company. It was a five-year agreement with six one-year renewal periods, and the last renewal period ended as of the last audit that was completed. Uh, Florida statutes are very specific about how we go about RFP uh, for auditor selection, and the, the genesis of it is establishment of an audit committee by the governing body. It's um, essentially they have to, the audit committee is there to carry out the entire procurement process from development of the RFP document to advertising to the ratings, the actual ratings and how we're going to rate the respondents and an actual, you know, selection or recommendation. So um, I've discussed this with city administration and we came up with the composition of an audit committee of myself, of our accountant and finance, Corey Olympio, Mayor Glenn Froth, and two local government practitioners, colleagues of mine that work for other cities, um, which I've notified you of in advance. One is Andrew Jean Pierre. He is the finance director for the city of Pompano. And the other is Nikki Satterfield. She's the finance director for the city of Dania Beach. They're both very experienced governmental finance directors, both certified public accountants, and they've both been through this process several times. So they understand what it takes and how to go about it. So I'm um, asking you tonight if I, uh, to take a motion or um, to establish the audit committee so that we can begin our work and start the selection process. It's probably going to take about six to eight weeks, so I'm hoping to get it wrapped up in early September to bring back a recommendation at that time. Right, give us the names of the two individuals just so we can get someone to the motion. It can be the, uh, Andrew Jean Pierre, Jean Pierre, City of Pompano Beach, and Nikki Satterfield, City of Dania Beach. Okay. Commissioner, is any discussion? One question. So this is considered an ad hoc committee that once the uh, selection pyramid has been completed, it just dissipates. Well, the, th this is the, oh. basically the minimum scope of what the committee can do. The, the committee can be tasked to do additional things and continue for an infinite duration, I guess, to do other things like overseeing the audit process, the actual financial audit. Um, but this is the so. this is the minimum of what an audit committee is selected to do. Mm -hmm. And unless you see a need for more of their help and assistance throughout the year, then there's, there's no need to continue their work. The request tonight is just to establish the committee mm -hmm. for the RFP process. Further discussion, commissioners? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, establish the city's uh, audit committee and uh, place on that committee the uh, two, in addition to the mayor and Frank and, and Corey, um, Andrew De Saint, De, De Brie, Jean Pierre, Jean Pierre, sorry, and Nikki Satterfield. Uh, to add those two names to the list. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion with a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Moving on to resolution. Frank, don't go anywhere. First resolution resolution adopting proposed millage rates for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2018, ending September 30th, 2019, and establishing date, time, and place of first budget public hearing. Motion to read. Second. A resolution of the City Commission of City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, adopting proposed military rate of 3.5893 for general operating fund purposes and proposed military rate of 0 0.1730 for debt service fund purposes for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2018 and ending September 30th, 2019. Setting forth the date, time, and place of the first public hearing to consider the proposed military rate for general fund and debt service fund purposes and the tentative budget providing for severability conflicts and providing for an effective date. This will set your those two millages and the uh, proposed meeting date is September 12th at 6.30 p.m. here in City Hall. Any to add to answer to Paula? Uh, not, at, not at this time. Commissioner's discussion. The rollback rate, um, basically we still have a 5.2 percent increase. Yeah, believe so it. We keep the same middle trade as past how many years now? Since 2012, I believe. 
Uh, operating millage. Operating millage. Yes. Yeah. If you, I don't know if you're aware, but the city of Weston proposed their new millage rate. They're going up 0.95 mils. They're going up to 3.36, yes. I think. Mm -hmm. and so, so are we number two? Yeah, we're moving on up. <laughs> um, so there, so people are starting to feel some strain that hadn't in the past, and as well as getting prepared for the, um, the additional homestead exemption that's most likely going to pass the ballot this November. Mm -hmm. Something to keep in mind. Not necessarily this year. We pretty much know what the impact is going to be coming up next year. So you may have to address it at that time. But um, for now, we're good with this rate this year. Okay. And what was the date? Of the, I'm sorry. The date is September 12th, 24th, 6:30. Okay. Um, commissioners, anything else? All right. Well, I have one quick question. What, in addition to the homestead issue in Weston, what was? Do you have any intel into why? What else? Yeah, they do. They do a three-year rate setting. So what they do is they set a rate, like if they do a smoothing. So they, if they didn't do it like that, they would recommend this year would be a little bit lower, probably like, you know, 2.8. The next year would be like the middle, like 3.3, .3, and then the later year would be like 3.6. But instead of doing that, they just set a rate for a three-year duration, and then they revisit it. It's just every three years as part of their strategic planning. It's just how they do things. I'm just, I'm just curious. Not that I suggest doing it that way. I like the way we do it. But they, they kind of say, we think this is what the rate's going to be for the next year, but every year they vote on it, like, and set it yearly? Yeah. So I would think they have to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. I think pretty much the privatized all our services, correct? Do they have to yeah. be yeah. third party? They, they they con they have um, I think about 13 employees and they contract out the rest from I mean every service you can provide they contract it out. Further discussion, Commissioner? Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 2018-2203. I'll second it. We have a motion. We have a second on resolution 2018-2203. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. <laughs> Agenda item four, resolution, pre preliminary resolution establishing estimated not avalorum assessment rate for fire protection services for fiscal year October, 20, October 1st, 2018 to September 30th, 2019. Motion to read. Second. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida relating to provision of fire protection services, facilities, and programs for the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida establishing the estimated assessment rate for fire protection special assessments for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2018. Directing the preparation of an assessment role, authorizing a public hearing and directing provision of notice thereof and providing for an effective date. Anything to add before we open up discussion? Uh, no, we covered a lot of this in the budget workshop, so I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Commissioners, questions? If there are no questions, I would offer a motion to pass resolution 2018-2204 relating to fire protection services. Okay. The motion, we have a second by Commissioner Long. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Mr. President, members of the City Commission, that public hearing will also be on September 12th uh, at 630, as will all the public hearings for the assessment resolution. Okay. Uh, I, agenda number, item number five, uh, same topic with respect to stormwater utility services for fiscal year 2018-2019. We have, a motion to read. we have a motion to read by Commissioner Law. Second. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Lighthouse Front Florida relating to provision of stormwater management provided by the City Stormwater Utility determining that certain real property will be specially benefited thereby. Establishing the method of assessing the cost of stormwater management service against the real property that will be specially benefited thereby. Directing the City Administrator to prepare or direct the preparation of a preliminary stormwater assessment role for the fiscal year commencing October 1, 2018, based upon the methodology set forth here in establishing a public hearing for the proposed stormwater assessment and directing the provision of notice in connection therewith, providing for conflict, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Same. Same. One thing I didn't say on the first one, and it applies to all these, is they're all decisions not to exceed amounts. So if there's any appetite for making changes, you still can do so. You just can't increase it when it comes up to the public hearing in September. Fair enough. Commissioner's discussion on stormwater fund assessment. Nothing. Uh, I will make a motion to approve resolution 2018-225. Um, then we'll have our public hearing on this on September 12, 2018. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. For agenda item number six, I've announced uh, my voting conflict given that this deals with a possible procurement issue related to residential solid waste services. So I will pass the gavel to Commissioner Mock. 
I may just take it home from here. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> okay, we need a motion to read. Motion to Second. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Idaho, Florida, relating to provision of residential solid waste collection services and facility programs in the City of Idaho, Point, Florida, providing for purpose and definitions, providing for legislative determinations, establishing the estimated rate for the residential solid waste collection services assessment for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2018, directing the preparation of a residential solid waste collection services special assessment role, authorizing public hearing and directing provision of notice thereof, and providing for an effective date. All right, do we need any further discussion on uh, uh, technicalities of this. I had one question. Yes. Uh, the question was is that it, according to the thing it says the uh, residential solid waste will increase for $168 for residential properties up to four units and then it stays the same for five or more units? No. On number four. Third sentence, number four. Yep. Each, you see how they have the financial impact risk in the agenda form. Yeah. I think it's just the, the wording. It's increasing by 168 for both types of properties. So, th so that is an increase to 515. It was previously 340 something dollars. 513. I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses looking at it. So yeah, it, it did go up for both of them. It was 345 dollars for units that are five or more, and it was, okay. uh, it's going up 168 dollars as well for both of them, for both types of It just seemed like, and then all of a sudden I was like, they're paying less for five or more units versus four units. They do pay a little less. Okay. But they're going up by the same increase. Gotcha. Okay. But this is proposed, and this is the maximum, and assuming if, if you're able to work through the issues, the amount might be estimated to be lower when you do the final approval in September. You just can't raise it in September. So how do we want to articulate this motion, Michael? Well. Uh, here's the situation. I think you want to. It's up to you all. But what the proposal is tonight is to um, pass it with what the numbers that are in there now, and then if things come to fruition uh, with uh, waste management and you get the lower rate, you will. This will be recommended to be lowered in September to what is actually needed for that contract. All right. Or if we go to RFP, same concept. All right. Do we have any motion to read? Motion to read 2018 Second. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, relating to provision of residential solid waste collection services and facilities and programs in the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, providing for purpose and definitions, providing for legislative determinations, establishing the estimate rate for the residential solid waste collection services assessment for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2018, directing the preparation of a residential solid waste collection services special assessment will authorize the public hearing and direct the provision thereof and provide for an effective date. All right, commissioners, discussion. Any further discussion? I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 2018-2206. We have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor, say by aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and one abstention. All right, we ready? Back to Jason. Short for glorious tenure. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> uh, item number seven. Thank you, Finance Director DePaulo. Um, item number seven, resolution awarding the bid for breathing air compressor RFP 2018-005. Back up to the podium, our fire chief, Gil Barkins. Good evening. Um, tonight for a resolution uh, awarding the bid for a breathing air compressor RFP number 2018-005. Uh, one of the most important pieces of equipment we have in the fire department is the self-contained breathing apparatus. The SCBA provides the firefighters uh, compressed air in order to enter fires or other hazardous environments where the air quality is unsafe to breathe. Our SCBAs must be checked every morning and during the checkout, 100 to 200 PSI um, is, is released from each bottle. This rate allows us approximately five days until the bottle must be ex uh, exchanged with a spare bottle as it reaches the minimal allowable PSI to safely enter a structured fire. We were filling our SCB bottles in the past at Fire Station 102 in Deerfield Beach. <clears throat> in 2015, we were able to purchase a MAKO SCBA cast field module from Channel Innovations. This enabled us to have PSO fire come to our station with their mobile air support vehicle and fill our compressed air storage cylinders. This process, this, this process would take approximately two hours <clears throat> and oftentimes would be cut short by them having to respond to other emergencies throughout Broward County. In 2017, DSO Fire was then able to continue sending their uh, 
mobile air support vehicles to fill our breathing air storage children due to manning, logistical issues, and vehicle downtime. Uh, since 2017, we have been able to use our MAKO SCBA cascade fill module, and currently we're using station 102 to fill our SCBA cylinders. Uh, the request for proposals was sent out um, for a breathing air compressor was advertised on Demand Star and in the Sun Sentinel on June 4th, 2018, and bids were publicly opened on June 25th, uh, 2018. Bids were received from the following two companies, Channel Innovations Corporation from Ocala, Florida, and the bid amount of 22,650, and compressed air supplies equipment in Dania Beach, Florida, uh, located in Dania Beach, with two separate op options. Option number one is the one that's the one that we expect and which is comparable to the one from Channel Innovations. The option number two is is the same type of compressor, but it's an open compressor, not covered, that we have gets filled with dust and all kinds of stuff that we 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 did not want. Um, the selection committee consists of the city administrator John Levisky and Fire Chief Gilmore. To review the proposal, the committee recommends Channel Innovations Corporation as the most responsible and responsive lowest bidder. I think we need a motion. Motion to read. Yep. Motion to read. Second. A resolution of the City Commission to the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, awarding the bid to Channel Innovations Corporation for the purchase of a breathing air compressor RFP number 2018-005, authorizing the expenditure of funds, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the agreements and all necessary documents, providing for an effective date. Motion passed 2018-207. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion passes 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. And agenda item number eight, resolution approving a lease purchase agreement with City National Bank. I instruct you to follow. Thank you. This uh, fiscal year, we have the budget included the purchase of several items using capital lease financing. We've already approved three resolutions to uh, reimbursement resolutions providing the intent to finance these items at a later date and uh, went out to, well, got proposals from, put it out to uh, a number of different banks and companies as well as we advertise it on Demandstar. I only ended up getting, ended up getting two responses. The one from City National Bank actually, if you notice, it has a little bit of a higher interest rate. However, there are no additional fees involved, so the total cost of the transaction is lower by $200. And we already have an existing master lease with them from last year, so this is really just going to be an addendum to the existing master lease. There's not as much paperwork involved. It's sort of just like adding on another lease schedule. And, um, and we still have a closing and, and a funding and all that, and um, we'd have to sign all the, the appropriate paperwork, but it's actually not as much as what was in the agenda item backup. We just haven't narrowed it down yet to exactly what we're going to need to execute. So um, recommend that the City Commission accept the proposal for lease purchase financing the City National Bank and authorize the appropriate officials to execute closing documents. A motion to read. Motion to read. Second, a resolution of the City Commission of City of Atlanta, Point, Florida, authorizing the execution and delivery of an addendum to the Master Lease Purchase Agreement with City National Capital Finance, authorizing the acquisition, purchase, financing, and leasing of certain equipment or capital items for the public benefit, authorizing the execution and delivery of documents required in connection therewith, and authorizing all other acts necessary to the consummation of the transaction contemplated by this resolution, and providing for severability conflict and an effective date. Further discussion, Commissioners, on Resolution 2018-208. Motion to pass. Motion to pass. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank then, you. Thank you, Brian. Agenda item number nine, resolution approving a collective bargaining agreement between the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, and the Metro Broward Firefighters Local 3080. City Administrator Levitsky. Uh, Mr. President, Commissioners, the, the fire union has ratified the contract. Uh, so now it's up to the City Commission to adopt it before it can be uh, implemented. Uh, the current agreement expired on 30 September 2017. The new agreement is effective 1 October 2017 through 30 September 2020. Uh, some of the items that go negotiated in the agreement are a 2% pay increase uh, retroactive to 1 October 2017, a 1% pay increase 1 October 18, and a 1% pay increase on October 1, 2019. The city is going to transition from the defined benefit pension to the Ford retirement system. All new firefighters will be enrolled in the FRS. 
Um, currently, firefighters will have a choice of joining the FRS, staying the existing plan, or going into the city's uh, defined contribution plan. It's also offered a, uh, uh, a drop program for the firefighters, an in-service distribution, seven-year in-service distribution, and a city will match uh, to buy firefighters past service at 1.6% that, that the non-vested firefighters up to $20,000 per firefighters. There's also enhanced education uh, monetary benefits in the contract, and we set the we agreed to set the uh, uh, the amount of annual leave accruals that people on workers' comp can get at six months. So after six months, they're not accruing any more vacation in September. So tonight, um, we're asking that the city commission uh, adopt the resolution and uh, pass the contract. Everybody motion should read. Motion to read. Second. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, approving the collective bargaining agreement between the City of Lighthouse Point and the Metro Broward Professional Firefighters, Local Number 3080, District 5, which agreement shall be effective October 1, 2017, and shall remain in full force and effect through September 30th, 2020, and providing for an effective day. Commissioners, I feel like some sort of commentary is appropriate, but I don't quite know how to articulate it. Commissioner Van Busker. Um, obviously, as we look toward the future, the idea of getting out of the pension business is important to us. So I think the transition into FRS is important. Uh, I'm a little nervous when we obviously approve this contract or they ratified it. The fact is that we still have yet to figure out the avenue at which we are going to be heading to that direction. We really don't have all the information as far, at least I know. I just want to make sure that we're ready because I don't know what the time period is for us to actually make that transition to the FRS. Um, and if we hire anybody in this gray period, is there how long is that period for? And uh, what if they decide new hire decides to actually go into our current defined benefit pension? Is there going to be any issues with that? Well, it says in the contract they can't. I can't speak great. I have to go to FRS. Yeah. It's like about that. The, okay. the, the, the next step. Um, is to adopt is to change the pension plan. Okay. Have, this is just the, this is just the contract. We have to uh, change the pension plan, and that's an ordinance. And after the ordinance is passed, I uh, have two readings, and then we have to make application to FRS uh, to, to get into the FRS plan. When do, when do we? Sorry. When do we? When do we? What's the timeline for yeah. the ordinance for changing the pension plan? Well, we'll bring it uh, August 28th. Uh, I'm sorry. August yes. August 20th. Yeah. First reading. I just want to make sure that we're, because like you said, it's two readings, and then we have to petition the state to actually be part of the plan. That's correct. What, how long does that, do we have any feel for how long that process takes in the state? Um, I, I think they're very uh, friendly, I guess, the people at the, at the FRS, um, so they try to work quickly. But then they have to, it has to be a vote on whether each person wants to join the FRS. So it takes several months after the ordinance is going to be passed to, to implement. Okay. Further discussion, commissioners? If not, I'll make a motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement between the City of Lighthouse Point and the Metro Broward Firefighters 3080. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Um, that brings us to the end of our regular agenda, agenda item not 10. We oh, go ahead. Now. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Mr. President, Commissioners, the uh, item number 10 was a collective bargaining agreement with the Police uh, Medical Association. They did not ratify the contract, so we're asking you to remove this uh, item from the agenda. Commissioners, you have to make a motion to remove it. Are you pulling it? You want to take a motion? You just pull it? You want to pull it? I'm just going to ask you to pull the order. Yeah. Pull it that one. Okay. okay. Can I ask a question then? Sure. But not about the, do we know what the vote was? Were we close? Um, 17, no, 18, uh, 8, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Item is pulled. It's kind of a bittersweet night. It would have been nice to have them both on here, but keep on trying. Um, so that brings us to the end of our regular uh, agenda. Now we'll open up the public comments and requests to the floor regarding anything. So resident wants to come address the city commission on any topic, feel free to come forward, state your name and your address. You have three minutes to address the commission. Seeing none, hearing none, we'll close public comments. Communications, commissioners. Okay, I'll go first. Commissioner Van Buster. 
I felt the uh, need we should hopefully do something. Uh, Victoria Burgess, who was a grew up in the city, I mentioned it last time that she was going to paddle across from uh, Cuba to Key West, and she accomplished that as a world record. It took her 27 hours. Uh, actually, it was pretty fun. interesting thing was they were actually had a tracker on her the whole entire time, and within the first two hours, it, she fell on the water and it, or slipped or however it worked and actually lost the tracker. So for a while, we weren't able to track her. But I think it's an amazing accomplishment that we have a young, a young lady uh, that from our city that grew up here, whose parents still live here, her parents are 30-plus year residents of the city, through our sports and all this other stuff, that she achieved the world record and it's such a great feat. And the fact that she, her whole entire idea was to show that basically how powerful a, a young lady or woman's spirit is and the fact that, uh, you know, she was trying to inspire other young women to accomplish or try for goals and shoot for high as the highest ceiling. So I think that uh, I would like to see us as the city, administra uh, city administration or the city, I'd like to see us put something together to come here and honor her for what she's done. I think it's, I think it's great. I mean, the fear, I mean, it's just amazing. 27 hours in stand-up paddleboard, 112 miles. I mean, that's, that is impressive. I mean, I could see, I know Commissioner Joffe could barely make it across from one end of the canal to the next. So I can only imagine what that is. You're not going to tell me that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I think it's important. What do you recommend, Commissioner Joffe? I, I would like to see us do something to honor her. I mean, a proclamation, proclamation is what I would like to say. If, uh, if we were so inclined to do that, I think it's a good here. Uh, she, I believe she is now officially moved from her parents' house, but her parents are still here, but she grew up in the city. I think it's important. Okay. Commissioners, any issue with that? No. Okay. We'll do it by consensus. Ask that administration draft some proclamation of recognition, please. So moved. All right, we'll do that by consensus. Um, we'll also second because I think five was seconded. Yeah. Don't think we need a vote, right? Do we need a vote? We have a motion. We made a motion. We had a second. Let's do it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Um, Anything else, Commissioner Manthouse Kirk? Uh, I would just say we actually touched on it originally, and I think we continually keep hearing it about, uh, I think they mentioned about Deerfield and Sunrise, about the recycling issues that are coming up before us here. In the, and I think I just want to reiterate the fact that I think we made a great decision this evening, but more so that we definitely have to keep our eyes on the horizon and what's going on with recycling and where that is all going. And, making sure that although sometimes things are financially seem right, that hopefully that we look also toward the environment and other things. So I, I, I just want to mention that every day there's something in the paper about recycling and waste and all A whole lot of garbage, if you ask me. Can I ask a question? That, which I, I thought I was always told that, like the things, the styrofoam things that come from your doggy bags or whatever that have the triangles on it can be recycled, but now they say they can't. So why why did they say they could? And now they're numbers. One through five. Yeah. That was the, that was my next part of it. Was can we go back to making sure that we are giving out? Because one of the things that I was re I've been reading and made discussion whether that we people are not understanding what can and cannot be recycled and making sure that we are recycling. To, uh, I think it's important because there's a lot of stuff out there that can be recycled. There's a lot of stuff that cannot be recycled. That sometimes we forget. I'm not like it's like is it one through five? Is it is it like seven? Is it like a nine? Yeah, I think seven. Left, well, but we had stickers on the uh, things, didn't we? When we first got I still had the sticker on my can, but it doesn't tell you yeah. the numbers. It kind of says yeah. you do this, you do that. What I learned is pizza boxes. You can't write the pizza boxes. Yeah, the top just yeah. on it. Yeah, but yeah. So what about like you know, pencils? You know, you could bring some. Maybe we can have a cycle come in and give us a little. I was shocked. that the, yeah, like right. that you can't the whole business has changed. Uh, yeah, the model. So much contamination, and, and, a, and if a load is contaminated, they'll throw off the whole load. And that's what yeah. It's all the work you do out the door. I just mentioned that before. There's many people that say, you know, yeah, yeah. As, that's as I try and it's kind of as I try uh, myself <laughs> across the so canal on a common. Is plastic silverware not allowed because it might? Have food on it, or is it not allowed because there's something well, wrong with the I know that it goes through a wash process, but I think it was the, the cardboard. Yeah, but it, it said it because I pulled the thing out of the I, paper and it yeah. said plastic silverware, paper plates. Our city attorney did it. No, I was going to say, I was at a presentation like that. She goes, and their waste hauler said that if you put your bottled waters in, you're recycling in a public bag. 
that the public's back contaminates that load. It'll be rejected. A lot of people do that. A lot of people put all the bottles and the one of those carry bags. I think the bag's recyclable too. It's not. Why not? The wine bottles are because it's not plastic or whatever. It's not plastic. Yeah. There's no market. So there's no market for it. So they said that it's got to have less than five percent contaminants or something. Very high or higher than that. No, it's less than one. Yeah, less than one. So and it's not a big market for recycling anymore either. I mean, I stop buying it. I just mentioned that so if we had some further information on it to make sure that we are doing it the right way. So yeah, put it out in the mayor's newsletter so everybody sees it, so they wouldn't be yeah. shocked. Like yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't forget the the, the um, Alpha 250 item that you all agreed to the RRB settlement to have the county um, continue. That um, they're still reviewing whether it's feasible to have a functioning system here in Broward County as an alternate to what we're doing now. Um, the consultant, I believe, has the report coming out at the end of this month. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a date, but uh, um, anyway, it's scheduled to come out. So that process, which you guys signed up on a couple of years ago, seems like maybe maybe sooner than that, more recent, but uh, it's still ongoing with the county and with the other RRB, former RRB members, to look at the Alpha 250 site and recycling the uh, waste from the county. That actually segued into what I wanted to talk about, which sort of is related and focused on our, our website, the Lighthouse Point website. With all the social media and the misinformation that's out there about recycling and people think that we've already made decisions or that we're not giving an opportunity to be heard uh, because they think we're Deerfield or whatever the reason is and then it just perpetuates itself. I went on the website to see if we were addressing the recyclable issue on our website, which we are not. Um, and I would encourage, if it's possible, especially once we get this contract taken care of, that we put something on the website, maybe the mayor can put something in the newsletter that says, you know, we're on top of this, we've got it handled, and there's going to be minimal to no changes in our garbage pickup because people are freaking out over this. And that's a great point. I mean, the bottom line, I agree with you, but I think the bigger point is our rec department has a website, our, a Facebook page, our library has a Facebook page. Who else has got that Facebook pages? The other department well, those actually linked to our, our what? The police have a Facebook page? The city of Lighthouse Point itself does not have a Facebook page. So but we do link to those we, pages. We do link to those pages, but we you I think the bottom line is no one's going to the City of Lighthouse Point website. Uh, and that, that's really what I'm saying. <laughs> is, is that we have an opportunity yeah. to communicate better. We really need to do that. The, the other side issue is we have on our website, which I was very happy to see, a discussion or at least the um, topic of the bond issue. And what we have on there is the boilerplate legal, I think it was the legal ad or some semblance of the legal ad that ran in the newspaper about the bond issue, which is all well and good, except we could communicate so much better if either the mayor or administration in some way were to have more of a topic of conversation, communication with our residents about some important things that are coming up that they should be aware of, rather than just the legal definition of the bond issue. Which brings me to when are we going to start promoting and what can we say and what can we do that is appropriate or that would be appropriate to put on our website that doesn't in create any legal issue on promoting our sales of the bond issue. I, I don't know what those are that we can say or can't say that we could put on our website, but any way we could make it more consumer friendly and talk to our residents about some of the important things that are coming up I think would be a benefit as we move into November. We got a lot of stuff on the ballot. It would be nice instead of just listing legal ease of what it is, is to have some sort of a dialogue with our residents about some important issues facing you, much like we do with the with the mayor's newsletter in some sort of a format to communicate with our residents. I was going to say, at the last meeting you confirmed you wanted the training, the ethics right. training before your meeting. We're going to schedule that before your next meeting, which is the 28th. Okay. Um, and then you, you told us that you want a topic of education, advocacy, and the role of ethics. 
Um, so that's what we're going to prepare Jacob and I, Jacob Horowitz and I. And, and if that but could also on, include written communications by the city on such topics as social media. It's basically the use of public resources to yeah. advocate or to educate and, and the difference when you do it on your own and what you can do on your own to, to advocate, which is different uh, right. than education. We also, if, if Mayor and, and Ms. Lewis, you want to, we could, we could also work with them in the meantime if there's anything that we want to explain on the website as an educational issue as opposed to um, advocating, you know, an explanation, right. um, you know, the facts, this is, this is the facts. You, you did pass a resolution that listed projects, bullet points, these are the projects, it is a fact, you know, those kind of things are what you would look at for educating folks, um, you know, what the, what the fact is on what an estimated uh, tax might be on a house with this amount, right? Um, you know, what does it mean to, um, you know, pro provide to extend the term? Why is it four years and then term limits? Because it will match up with the even years and, and create, you know, those things like that can be done to educate folks on what they're doing. You just can't say, hey, well, yeah, this is a and great I think idea. The, the safe way is just to repeat the legalese, but I'm suggesting that we that we can we reach out in a more consumer-friendly approach without advocacy. That's why we were available to review whatever is prepared, or we can help prepare it. Okay. Are we going to make this PowerPoint presentation now? I heard tell about a confidence. Yes. Well, the we'll, we'll, we'll 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 uh, architect actually sent some renderings today of okay. uh, the public police building, so I sent them to the mayor. And um, so we, we got to look at those and, and have the commission. We'll send it to you to look at. But we were, I mean, I, we talked about it at the other the last meeting. Um, we were going to wait until later, not, not start now with the advertising on the website. We were going to wait until later in, in the summertime. And then we're planning on doing that after. Um, I conducted the training, but uh, we'll get something on the website. All right, and just there. so you know, and I think you probably do, there are some local businesses that are eager to put up the renderings to show residents what, what we're talking about. So once those get approved by everybody, then that, that's another uh, segment we can take out to educate. Yeah, we just saw them today. And yeah, I understand. Maybe, maybe we need to change a little bit. We'll have to understand. And, and we need to get going on it because basically we don't have until November or whatever. We only have until October because the absentee ballots and all go out and you don't want to lose all those people. So I, we never get everything on the table by mid-September at the latest. You know, um, like I say, it's, I, 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 it's a good point. We're working on the renderings. Uh, we're working on the garbage, working on the uh, recycling. Uh, we're trying to stay on top of everything. But that, that's a good point. We'll put more on the, on the website. Thank you. Is there any else communications? I, you got to be in my bonnet about the city of Pet House Point Facebook page. I mean, I, I really am starting to question why we don't. I mean, there's so much we can do. About the three years. We, well, we well, we talked about we, we talked about having Facebook pages, and some of the departments have been very proactive about doing it. But I just think about again to your point, you seek out the um, website. It's not exactly, with all due respect, the most flashy or grabbing thing in the world. The beauty of Facebook is Facebook reaches out to you. You can be notified when new stuff is posted. There's so much we could be doing with a city Facebook page. We could be posting the links to this meeting. If we want more people watching the meetings, we could be posting links to this meeting. We could be doing a lot of stuff that the city of White House Point had a Facebook page. I give a lot of credit to the rec department, the library, and particularly um, the police department that I did forget, even though I get reminders from them all the time, you know, I follow them on Facebook. But it, it's just, it's a constant reminder to the residents who choose to opt into it that their city is providing services to them. And I guess I've just been having a real hard time articulating why the city itself doesn't have um, a Facebook page. So if I'm the only one who thinks that way, so be it. But Let me ask a question. If we had a Facebook page, who would, would you reply to things that people yeah. put people like that? Therein lies right? one of the dangers. Well, I think you can set it up. That's what worries me. What people you might say. Really you don't have comments. You can set it up that way. Oh, without um, But our, our, our departments have, have the ability to post comments. It's right now, I think it's good. Yeah. You know, I think that when you talk about social media, that and, and you talk to a lot of experts, and you say your, your website is the foundation. That's where you drive a lot of the information gathering, too, so that you're doing your topical things. 
of okay, we got you know a sale of uh, the used library books coming up, or we can accept donations, or there are new times, and then it still can drive you back to a website where you're going to have more of the static information. You know, what time are the hours of building department? Here's how you can check your uh, permit and things like that. So it's really a whole system of how you're building the thing up. And having the separate ones are good, but you also have to have that if you want that main Facebook page, and then it can also drive traffic over to Fleet. Yeah, I'm not suggesting we get rid of them. No, but no, the website is, is, is key though, because if you think about this uh, this time now, is everybody you know will revert to a website. You know, that's number one. They're going to look. That's so sure. That's still the base. It's still if, if you're looking up a, a company, you're not going to go to the website, or you're going to go to the website rather than Facebook. But you still can check the Facebook because that's where you get the more topical type things. But it has to drive it back there. So it, I think it is key. Michael, remind me, we had this discussion, and wasn't there something about as elected officials we could not get in a Facebook situation? You have to be careful because of the Sunshine Law. Exactly. You know, I remember if we you had get into a dialogue. Got but, but you know, all these things, if the city set up a Facebook page, there could be safeguards, there could be education. Um, but yeah, you do not want to have, you do not want to engage each other in, you know, any of these social media, in whether it's an official city website or not. It could be your own personal, private Facebook pages, and you're engaging each other. It's still the same issue. Um, there's differences with, with retention and the retention set up, obviously, because we've got our departments that are using it. Um, but it's like everything else with elected officials and anybody on our board. You know, they you always got to be aware of sunshine. No, I, I, that's that's a completely. I just don't. That's a completely separate issue. We could all be trained not to post on the city of Lighthouse Point Facebook page. Mm -hmm. But I personally would think if there was a city of Lighthouse Point Facebook Facebook page, what better time to unveil it than when we are pushing something as big as a bond, or we could post stuff about you know the bond. I'm not suggesting that we would do it. I'm suggesting it would be done by city administration or something like that. But again, I just it, it, it's it's rather odd to me that we don't have a city Facebook page. Jason, uh, I do have a person that I uh, I'd love to take the email to it um, that is a social media expert in municipalities. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the right person that he's been pointing by, but it is a person that was since Cabell and that bonded with me. We got, I would say, about 95% of that, and then you trailed off. Of that. <laughs> we heard that, um, but we heard that you're working, that you're you're trying to incorporate uh, a social media aspect to the uh, to the bond education process, which is which is appreciated. Um, I still think maybe beyond that, once we get over that hurdle, a Facebook page for the City of Lighthouse Point is a good idea, but it's a good place to start. And appreciate and glad to know you're. Um, you have that on the horizon and on the agenda. Um, anything else, commissioners? I have one other really quick thing. Uh, nothing. I had a resident approach me about this cute idea about, and this is something that John, just who would I point them to? They were talking about doing like an informal book exchange among residents, um, but like through like something on their property. They like put something on their property where people can read books, and they wanted to make sure it was in conjunction with code, or they didn't do anything. 
you know, that would violate code or put anything up. Who would they talk to? Just somebody in the building department? I didn't explain it very well. It's an informal book exchange where they put up a reading book. They have a reading, a reading book. Yeah, and they like, you know, build something on their property. Not when I say build, I mean like put something on their property. But they were just wanted to, didn't want to run afoul of anything in our code. Who would they? The building department? Uh, I, I, I mean, I can help out research out there. Okay. But I, I, it doesn't sound like it's much of an issue. No. It's, it's like a mail. It's basically like a mailbox yeah. where you put in books and it's a smaller thing. Yeah. There's a lot of other communities that are doing it specifically. You know, you put your you go in, you grab a book out, you put a book in, and then it always sits out there and someone maintains it and it's, you know, maybe 24 inches by 24 inches by two and a half feet tall and it sits on a post or on a pole or something and just an informal way of people exchanging books and stuff like that. I'm going to do some research on it. I'm not going to yeah. it, but we'll I assume it's a non-issue, but they, they were kind enough to ask before they did it, so I thought it was worth it. And, and they want it on their own part? Yeah, own they put it on their own part. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll direct Thank you. Thank you. That's all I got. Anything else, commissioners? Don't forget to tell me the great library, too. We have the great library, too, that as well. Yeah. All right. We're, thank you. Well done, Jake. Thank you. Yeah,